I mean, I think m music is meditation. You're definitely on like a spiritual plane when you're playing music or listening to music or participating. It's, it's, it's a spiritual thing. I just think overall, what we are as human beings is like the most amazing thing in the universe. It's just, you know, unimaginable what, what is going on in here. So I, I think the thing that connects us to, to the universe is art and creativity. And that's really, you know, the meditation of, of, of life is really about, you know, creativity and art. Here we are on the Weird Music Podcast with Carl Denson. Carl, man, so glad to have you on here. So for all you out there listening, Carl here is, he's a music legend, uh, and he's about to embark on a 21-date spring tour with his band, the Grey Boy All-Stars. Uh, also, Carl's known for playing in Lenny Kravitz band, the Rolling <coughs> Stones, and leading Carl Denson's Tiny Universe. Uh, so Carl, this new Grey Boy All-Stars album, it, it stemmed from a four-part series you guys did during during the pandemic with Nugs.net. To start this off, can you kind of tell us the backstory uh, of this great new Grey Boy All-Stars project? You know what? It really is just us trying to get organized. And, um, you know, so we've, we've been... Uh, th this is going to be the most shows we've played in probably 10 years, you know, um, this year because we've got we've got th this spring tour and then we've got some more stuff in the fall and um and we just really like playing together so we've just been trying to figure out how to how to make more of it you know with everybody's schedule so we um you know during the pandemic we got got on the horn you know a couple times a week and started figuring out what to do and we ended up um you know doing a couple of these nugs.net things and out of that because mike um, has such a great studio. We got everything recorded and we're sitting on all these recordings and, and just rehearsing, you know, we're doing all these tunes and we're like, you know, we've got all these cover songs that we never released, you know? And so we just kind of started compiling things. And this is the first, uh, you know, um, product of that compilation. Carl, I'm curious, like you've played with such unbelievable groups what do you feel like makes gray boy all-stars unique first of all it's what we're trying to do hmm. you know and that is play jazz on the dance floor i like so it. that's that's really kind of what really makes us what we are and then then you just have these funny ass personalities man like like everybody could be a leader on their own and we managed to keep this weird um this weird democratic state kind of in flux all the time. You know, it's, it's really, I mean, if you watched it, you know, day to day, it's hilarious because high energy characters, you know, Elgin's super high energy. Robert is, um, <laughs> Robert is, is, is high energy in his own way of like really thoughtfulness. And then, you know, you've got me kind of spazzy and, and uh, you know, doing a lot of stuff. And then Chris Stillwell, you know, it's kind of a quiet genius and, uh, and, and, and Aaron Redfield, you know, is, is out there in the pop world, like doing all this crazy stuff. So it's a weird amalgamation of, of characters and, you know, none of them, except for me at the time when we got together was really like trying to even play jazz. So it came from a very strange place. And then you had, DJ Grayboy at the beginning, you know, who kind of uh, put the whole thing together and and um, and curated it for for the first couple of years. You said jazz on uh, for the dance floor. I, I love that. Tell me more about like why that is is what's attracted you that genre. Well, I've always been a jazz guy. But I've also always loved dance music, and I've always loved the idea that jazz started as dance music. You know, Louis Armstrong and Jelly Roll Morton and Bill Bolden, they were all playing, you know, for clubs, people dancing. So that's where it came from. It kind of came from the same place that, you know, hip hop 
or funk comes from, you know, somebody's house playing music. So I've always been attached to that idea. This is like uh, early 90s when I first met Gray, uh, DJ Greyboy. You know, I had been spending time with Lenny Kravitz in Europe and I would always go to, to dance clubs. And I started hearing like out of the hip hop thing, I started hearing this, this other thing, which was like, um, you know, DJ Guru and um, Jazzanova, where they're starting to sample jazz records, records that I knew, like Grant Green and, and, um, and uh, uh, Melvin Sparks and stuff like that, where you're like, wait, I, I know that from my childhood and only black people listen to that record, you know, like, it's some really rare shit that's sitting in your uncle's closet, you know, and from always being like a, a you know, a Lee Morgan and a Wayne Shorter fan and realizing what they did with Wayne Shorter's tune, Tom Thumb, or uh, Lee Morgan, the Sidewinder, are two of the first Boogaloo tunes. And, and the Boogaloo is like, you know, is like the funky, the funky jazz. <laughs> the cool beatnik shit i realized that that it was starting to connect the dots were starting to connect and for me as a jazz guy i was like i want to get in on that and then i met dj Greyboy, and he was talking about boogaloo so we met and he, when he said the word boogaloo i was like okay this guy knows what's up so we started working and then he was slowly putting together this whole other thing with um, you know, Elgin Park and Zach Nager and Chris Stilwell and um, Robert Walter. And so when I walked into a room with those guys, immediately we had this chemistry and it was, it was on. I'm fascinated by like cross pollination of genres and how tracing back music is, is genres combining and combining and they just, it's just keeps on pushing the boundary. Uh, it seems like that's kind of, what's going on here, but it's also like a renaissance of, of like what you grew up loving. Well, it happens all the time in every idiom kind of, you know, that what's old is new. That, that, that term is really uh, relevant to pretty much everything, fashion, art, you know, industry. People grow up listening to or looking at or studying something and there's a point in their life where it becomes relevant again and, they're, and they, because they know it intimately, they can express it, you know? And um, so that's kind of what happened with us. You know, we were just, we were just, um, you know, digging some things that were, that were old and figured out, oh, we can, when we started playing, you know, the first couple of years we were playing in like little DJ clubs and, um, you know, people were dancing and we're playing the Horace Silver tune and we're looking at each other laughing, like we're getting away with murder here, you know? We're playing freaking Horace Silver or or um, or Milt Jackson tune in a dance club, and they're and they're they they think we wrote it, and they think like this is modern dance music. So, you know, you just kind of got to keep your eye and your ear out, you know, to to figure out what's relevant right now, especially if you're trying to, you know, for us play jazz, it's it's always a pain in the ass trying to figure out how to you know keep an audience. So, Carl, I want to zoom out here a little bit. Looking back on your journey, becoming a professional musician and really reaching the level you've reached, people have these huge dreams like these of playing on these huge stages, uh, working up to get to play alongside musicians they look up to. And we have these romantic goals. What have you learned about fulfillment and satisfaction from kind of reaching these heights and then how it kind of the thrill starts to subside after it and you take stock of of really what does matter everybody's got to start out on the journey and start hammering nails you know like that's the constant you know you got to hammer some nails you know you have you have your your very eclectic characters and then you have your very driven like what i know exactly what i want to do and i'm going to go exactly right there and um so I'm, I'm more of the eclectic guy where I was just kind of figuring out, you know, taking all of the things in. And so it took me a little bit longer to, um, to, to get some fulfillment, you know, financially and stuff. But, but um, artistically, I think it's, you know, that's the journey is, is hammering nails and, and keeping it up and doing it every day and working towards your goals. 
and then kind of allowing your heart to set the path, you know, because there was a point where I was just trying to learn how to play saxophone, you know, like that's all I wanted to do. And so anything that didn't have to do with like learning how to play saxophone was really kind of a, a distraction, you know, so I knew that I just wanted to learn how to play saxophone and I wanted to learn how to write music. You know, like that was my, those were my twin goals. I've always been a composer. So I was always writing and I was always practicing. And then uh, there came a point where, um, where I realized, you know what, I probably am going to need some kind of a pop gig to survive and, and play jazz. Cause I realized jazz wasn't a high paying gig, you know? And so I, so I kind of moved my, moved my, my, you know, my listening and my, and my practicing towards being able to do more things, you know. And then after I got the Lenny Kravitz gig, um, shortly after that, I realized, oh, I want to make records. You know, I watched Lenny make records and I was like, I want to make my own records. And that was a part where that went into my brain and then it started creating its own pathways, you know. And then I ended up with a record deal. You know, and then, um, you know, after that, it was like, I want to leave my own band and, and, you know, do my own thing because I want the freedom from somebody else's schedule. And it's just that that whole process of like, you know, realizing your dreams, but like, like knowing what they are from moment to moment. And I think a lot of people, um, you know, a lot of people just want to be famous and rich, you know, so that's what they aim for. You know, um, me, I, I, I just want to make really good art, you know, which, is, which I'm still after. So it's, it's just, you know, the whole process of, of the people that I've gotten to meet and play with over the years has just been a, a, a part of that. And it's, it's really funny, like, you know, from, for all the people that I've met now, if I'd known what I know now, I would have treated it completely different, you know? I had a chance to hang out with Bjork once and, and I totally didn't know who she was basically. And I was like, didn't realize she was going to become one of my favorite singers, you know, and, and, uh, and I kicked myself all the time. Like, you know, we were doing this show with Lenny Kravitz and, and, uh, in, in London. And, uh, and I went over to talk to her. It was like a TV show. And I went over to talk to her background singers and then Bjork pops up and is like, what are you guys doing? Are you guys doing anything later? And, you know, and I was just like, no, I'm, I'm going to go back to the hotel, you know, kind of a, kind of a dud like that. And, you know, probably a year later, maybe two years later, I like fell in love with Bjork and I'm like, ah, oh, you know, or, or I met David Bowie once, you know, and, and I didn't know that he was a sax player at the time. And, um, and he came over and was talking to me because I was practicing outside at, at the, at the uh, stadium we were playing and you know it's David Bowie I, I, I if I was a little bit more of a geek I would have I would have fully geeked out on him and maybe you know got to know him but um but you know it's just it's just that process man of, of just hammering nails and staying on your path and you know realizing what you want to do and um and it, it, it's that's what changes you you know over time I love how you said like what you're after is just making great art at this point in your, in your journey, what is, what does growth and improvement look like for you? You know what? I've got a pretty good ear and a pretty good eye for things now. So for me, it's just like, like I said before, hammer and nails, it's just output, you know, like, like when you look at any year of, 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 uh, of Picasso's work, you know, if they give you a retrospective of, of, 1948 you're going to see a bunch of a bunch of great art he just was cranking out art his whole life and so that's kind of what I'm trying to do you know and I'm I'm you know I do a, a bunch of different things but um you know it could be anywhere from like we're, we're going to release a, a kind of a dance single that's that's way out of my out of my uh wheelhouse generally you know like an electronica thing and and then um you know I'm probably going to do a an Afrobeat record after that. And, you know, and then I'm, I'm trying to learn logic really well right now so I can start making my own beats and tracks because I'm tired of trying to get people to help me with stuff. And, 
you know, and then I'm, I'm, I'm working on a, on a screenplay, you know, a sci-fi and I'm just, just trying to crank out stuff, you know, trying to make good stuff. I love it, man. I can't wait for that. A screenplay, a sci-fi story. Can you tell me about that? Uh, yeah, it's called entanglement and it's, uh, it's, it's basically about, um, this guy who, uh, you know, like there's, it's a, it's a, it's a multidimensional kind of idea. And so, you know, the idea behind it is that, um, you know, a certain amount of humans, you know, over, over cross dimensions have this mutation that allows them to kind of hear and feel the other dimensions sonically because it's, um, you know, at the string, at the string level, you know, everything vibrates. So just I, the idea that, that each dimension vibrates at a slightly different frequency. And, um, so, you know, as a kid, this guy was like, you know, seeing things and, you know, he had a really kind of messed up childhood because of, because of it, you know, like he was having nightmares, night terrors and stuff because he was seeing shit and it was real, but, you know, everybody thought he was crazy. And so, you know, he eventually gets sent to an insane asylum and, you know, has to deal with that. But, but that's the, that's the overarching idea is that we're dealing with, you know, humans that can, that can feel and hear the other dimensions. And so when you see like a Bigfoot or a, or a ghost or an alien, you know, like it, it's, it's real. You're just actually seeing a little touching of the, of the dimensions. And it's called entanglement. Yeah. And that does it, what does that word mean to you? Entanglement? Like, I know that's, that's a word there's been like really awesome metaphysical books written about like, yeah, it, 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 it means basically the idea of the physics idea of entanglement at, you know, faster than the speed of light. Like that, that idea that things are moving faster than the speed of light, you know, um, you know, quantum physics is so amazing. You know, like I, I, I did a, I did my little rudimentary, um, I like to read science books. So I've, so I've read, read a lot of stuff, you know, a lot of stuff I don't understand. But, um, but the idea that, you know, like, um, you know, quantum physics is, is how, our, how this freaking computer and our phone works is, is based on the probability that, a, that, a, that an electron is going to be somewhere in space at any moment. And, you know, like, that's just a really simplified way of, of you know, saying something that these guys who go to school at MIT and, you know, they, that they understand intimately, you know, the Elon Musk of the world. But, um, but that idea of entanglement, you know, like the, the, the thing of uh, um, Schrodinger's cat, you know, where um, an event is only, a, a, an event determines itself by observation. Mm. So, so you, you, you have, you have, they, they did an experiment where they, where they shot two electrons away from each other at the speed of light. And one has to be positive, one has to be negative. But you only find out which one's positive or negative once you observe one of them. If you were observing both of them, you wouldn't get a, you wouldn't get a, a, a value. But at the, at the moment you observe one, the other one changes, you know, it's, it's this weird thing of like, is the is the cat dead or alive in a in a in a box with with poison? It, it's some really bizarre stuff, but but that basically is the uh, the idea behind entanglement is that we are all entangled, and um, and then the science of it is that you know we're entangled that there are things moving faster than the speed of light, which is you know for me consciousness. I love it. I love it. It's like this, this concept of we are all connected. It's like really going down that rabbit hole. Yeah. Yeah. And we really are. It's, it's, um, and then there's the, uh, you know, on the other side of it, there's this, um, global warming kind of, uh, um, idea that we're, that we're messing with because, um, you know, these, uh, tuners, as we call them, they've been, they've been moving things around from dimension to dimension, you can move inanimate objects from one dimension to another. And um, so they've been doing that for thousands of years and now it's starting to cause an imbalance. 
So it's kind of similar to, you know, what we're dealing with with global warming and, you know, who's going to really pay attention. Mm. So, yeah, it's almost done. <laughs> Man, I can't wait for that. Yeah, we're doing a we're doing a graphic novel. We got this really cool kid from my my writing partner's high school, who's um who's animating it right now. He's he's really great artist. So he's drawing all the characters, and we're starting on the graphic novels. Rad. So you know, just trying to do good good stuff, man. That's that's uh that's the name of the game. It's trying to do good good work. We were in the studio with Gray Boy, with DJ Gray Boy on my on my uh, record uh, D stands for Diesel, and uh, and we had brought in Andy Bay, who is was both of our favorite singer, and we brought him in from New York, and and I sent him this tune, and you know he gets in the studio, and we start the band starts playing, you know, and he starts kind of singing over it. But it doesn't really sound like he knows what he's knows what the song is. You know, he's kind of messing around with it a lot. And and I'm I'm looking at Gray and I'm like, man, I don't know. I don't know if this guy knows what he's doing, you know, if he knows the song or whatever. And uh so we go, okay, well, let's take one. And and dude, we 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 played the tune and he sang the most hair-raising shit on this track. And it was like it was so further evolved than I ever imagined. That's why I didn't recognize the tune because he was like, he like took it here and like just set it way up there right away. So in two takes, he nailed the tune. And I remember Gray, <laughs> I remember Gray just screaming at the console. He's like, see, this is what happened if you try to do good shit. This is what <laughs> happens. <laughs> Man, that is all about great making great shit. Exactly. I love what it. What do you play? What do you play? Man, I play life. I, I play guitar. <laughs> um, I, I play around, man. <laughs> good, good. One day I'd love to be an amazing singer, but I'm at the beginning of that journey. Oh, that's awesome. That's fun, man. Yes, I, sir. I just, I just got comfortable with my voice. You know, I've been singing for a good th- 25 years now, and I just got comfortable maybe – five, six years ago where I really feel the long like, road. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not a natural, you know, there's, there's those people that just open their mouth and they have, they have great voices, but I had to work at it. And you know, the, the, between the mechanics and the ideas and the, you know, being comfortable with your own voice, it's, it was a long, long road, but I finally figured out what I, what I sing like now, you know, talking about like metaphysical stuff like the way our voice is vibration um and what it like i if i do singing practice for a while i just feel like euphoric almost if i'm really locked into it i feel like just from my body reverberating sound or or what i don't know right. but like have you ever so some of the some of the exercise i do when my my singing teacher gave me this like hindu chanting um uh-huh. track um going on a limb like do you have any insights into like what you think music is doing to the minds i mean i think music is meditation so you're definitely on like a spiritual plane when you're playing music or listening to music or you know participating it's 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 a spiritual thing i just think overall what we are as human beings is is uh is like the most amazing thing in the universe. You know, the fact that we do what we do, that we, you know, we're sit, sitting here on a freaking computer talking to each other from, you know, 3000 miles away and, you know, and we're, and we're making music and we're coming with, up with ideas and we're changing our environment and we're fighting a freaking war in Ukraine. And, you know, we're, we're, it's just, you know, unimaginable what, what is going on in here. So I, I think, you know, the, the thing that connects us to, to the universe is art, you know, the meditation of, of, of life is really about, you know, creativity and art. Amen. Do you feel like all of us um, in one way or another are artists? 
I feel like we should be. I think I don't I don't necessarily think everybody's on the same conscious plane. I think there's a lot of darkness and bullshit going on too at the same time, you know. So I'm not gonna call a guy, you know, sitting in his fucking bunker t- thinking about hurting people. <laughs> an artist. Yeah, facts. You know. But uh but yeah, I think we're all connected to the same string and we're supposed to be making art, you know. So I know you, you're talking, you're, you're a proponent of Tai Chi and Qigong. Um, yeah. Talking about music, though. And you know, we've talked about Reiki on this podcast before. Do you, right. think, do you think music does a similar, like, how do you think music does a similar thing to us? Vibration. I think Reiki and music and um, Tai Chi and exercise and, and, you know, a great painting, you know, I think it's all the same thing. You know, we're, we're, we're dealing with different levels of vibration, you know, like light is vibration, color is vibration, sound is vibration, touch is vibration. Like, I, I think it's all the same blend of, of, of things and, and it's how we use it that, you know, makes it useful to us. Tension and release can be one of the most moving, profound musical elements, musical techniques. Um, what do you think that does to the mind of the listener, specifically with tension and release? It's storytelling. If you're telling a good story, there's tension and relief. You know, like for me, learning the Grateful Dead, which I'm not a deadhead at all. I didn't grow up listening to the Grateful Dead. And, um, but I'm, I'm, I'm inquisitive enough that when I started playing um, in this jam band scene and saw how people were reacting to the Grateful Dead, I actually, you know, took the time to figure out what they were doing. And now that I've played with Phil Lesh for a while, and got to see the audience reacting to that music. It's the most, it's the ultimate tension and relief. And um, the, the way they write their songs, you know, with these other little sections and you get into, you go, you get into their bigger songs like Terrapin Station, where there's all this weird stuff going on. It's so, it's such tension and release for the audience that like the, the first time I really watched the audience in, in New York, and, and we played that song. It was one of the most amazing experiences for me because I saw the tension and release of the audience firsthand. Like they were, you know, like you go to these weird little sections and they're like going there with you and they're hoping that you don't fuck it up, you know, and then, and then you come out of it and then there's another section and, and they're just following you the whole way. And there was just like, and then you get to the big section where it's like, tear up in and they're just like losing their minds and I was just like this is incredible you know like the fact that these guys have written music and and that's kind of what what holds their music together is there is all of that tension and release you know for the audience there's all these little stories and this traveling that you do listening to their music and um and I got it that night. It was like, oh, okay, this is what it really is about. And so, you know, I'm more, I'm way more mindful of that now with my own writing of trying to take the journey, you know? Um, and I, you know, I was just, I was just listening to the dead with my girl, like a couple of weeks ago, you know, I've gotten to the point now where I listen to them for pleasure and I'm, and I'm starting to, I feel like, you know, eventually it's going to seep into my writing in a in a in a cool way but you know that's really it's like when you read a book you know you 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 have you have these chapters that are just like very um blase you know you're just getting through it and then then you get to something that's that's huge and you're like ah and then you know it's it's storytelling i think tension and release is 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 the key to storytelling i love it carl denson Gray Boy All Stars, man, so glad to have you here on the Weird Music Podcast. Get to get to chat with you, Carl, man. Thank you for coming you on. You too, Cam. Thanks for uh, thanks for the uh, invite. Appreciate it. My mind is kind of spinning about all of this. You know what you said about art and 
us being human and how unbelievable it is just to be alive and really letting it sink in how amazing art and the earth can be and how music is is us trying to convey that awe i just love that yeah so so for all you out there listening definitely check out the dates on this gray boy all-stars tour i know i'll be seeing you in columbus when you come through to woodlands tavern man carl this has been the weird music podcast thank you so much thank you sir take care you made it this far thank you for listening and a big thank you to our sponsors, Hemp Relief, CBD, SEM Tickets, Devil Wind Brewing, and Artillery Productions. We've got links in the description below. Go check out all the awesome stuff they've got going on. And yeah, much love, everyone.